Welcome back to Like Mother Like Murder. It's bonus time, and we had the chance to sit down with Kevin from Where the Weird Ones Are. We start off talking and doing a little Q&A with him, learning about his podcast, his hot sauce he's about to be selling, and what he is looking forward to very soon. Then he tells us a story of a missing child, Ayla Reynolds, a beautiful little girl, not even two years old, and all of the details surrounding her unsolved disappearance, investigation, and where it stands today. Be sure to go check out and show some love to Kevin at Where the Weird Ones Are. Here we go. Welcome to Like Mother, Like Murder. I am Rachel. And I'm Heather. We bring you the good, the badass, and the crime. This is Like Like Mother, Mother, Like Like Murder. Murder. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Like Mother, Like Murder. We have a very, very special bonus episode for you guys today. Bonus. So we have Kevin. (laughs) 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 That was Kevin (laughs) with the sound effects. Um, Kevin is here. He is the host of Where the Weird Ones Are. It is a conversational podcast which talks about Many, many different topics with many, many different guests. So thank you for being here, Kevin, with us. Introduce yourself. Tell us about your podcast. Tell us everything. All right. Well, uh, like uh, Heather said, my name is Kevin, a host of uh, Where the Weird Ones Are. is a conversational-based podcast uh, that um, revolves around guest experiences and encounters with paranormal uh, supernatural things that's like you know aliens cryptids um, and weird stuff and we'd get into uh, spirituality and mm-hmm. um, mental health I talk about a lot because it's important to me uh, because I've had my struggles of you know childhood trauma and blah 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 I, st- I went on this um, uh, spiritual journey and that's what brought me to actually starting the the podcast and uh believe it or not i used to be like a really bad introvert where i like technically i would have never even reached out to you guys to um come on to tell this story tonight and Mm -hmm. to to, like to to talk to people that i have no idea who the hell they are almost every week twice a week yeah um is 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 man it's a it's interesting to see how far uh, I've come with that. And I also dive into conspiracies. Um, Conspiracy Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> Conspiracy Tuesdays move to, to Patreon only. Um, but there is like a, I do like a pretty long extensive preview for them. Um, just right. because I, because I have, so Conspiracy Tuesdays, I have uh, three guests. So I want to make sure that they're heard. Uh, still, even though they're on the Patreon, um, mm-hmm. and I want them. So I do like the, you know, how we share who we are in the beginning of podcast when we're guesting, right? And then at the end, so I make sure that clip in the beginning where they're sharing who they are and where they can find where you can find them, and at the end, I make sure those both clips are in in the previews just so people can, you know, know who they are and, and right, stuff like right. That. Um, but yeah, that's. That's pretty much uh, me and the podcast in the in the the long and short, I guess. But I started it like like I said to uh, once I started this journey, I went through a like really bad breakup. Not that she was a mm. bad person, but like she like she broke me really bad, yeah. um, mm. and I didn't know who I didn't know who I was. Like I was a different person with her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. She just like completely like was. Anyways, um, so I started that and then I, I used to be like, I used to be one of those people like, who the fuck wants to listen to, I'm sorry, can I cuss? Oh, 100%. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <You're fine. laughs> fuck is my like comma, so. But every um, time you say it, you have to say, sorry, Terry. No, I'm just no. kidding. You don't have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That's Rachel's mom and 
we <laughs> she listens to like every episode but we cuss so much and we well, know and she still thinks you know, that I I don't cuss and so every time that it comes out and I mean she's day. well aware oh uh, yeah <laughs> so it's you know what joke there. It's it's funny because I asked that and I listened to you guys and I know that you cuss and I still ask. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. It makes sense. We get that yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I I used to be one of those people like, who the fuck wants to listen to, to, to a bunch of people just have like a random conversation about shit? I ain't listening right. to that. <laughs> right. And then like 2020 came around and nobody wanted to talk to you because nobody could freaking wanted to stand close enough to you to talk to you, which was super annoying. Mm-hmm. Um. So then I, I started listening to podcasts, and um, Joe Rogan was my first one, and then I came across a conspiracy podcast, and then the conspiracy podcast, I came across a paranormal one, and then while I was listening to the paranormal one, I was like, you know what? I want to do this shit. I want to talk to people. And about you put them all, the all together. You took the <laughs> Joe Rogan conversational, and you took the paranormal yeah. and the conspiracy, and you said, guess who I am? I'm uh-huh. Kevin, <laughs> and I'm weird. <laughs> Here I, I am. <laughs> And my uh, my my friend my, my best friend um, kind of inspired me. He had uh, his own podcast too, and he stopped doing it like two year, almost two oh, years okay. ago now. Um, but gotcha. I was on his podcast, and I have had so much fun. And I think that's really why that was really what got me really listening to other podcasts was being that's on his. cool. So yeah, yeah. And his awesome. is like set up like kind of like Joe Rogan, just like talk about random shit. So that's awesome. Cool. I you know. I love those podcasts. And I do wanna I do wanna say as a podcast junkie myself, I I enjoy listening to you and you you giving that background story of like mm-hmm. you thinking that well, I shouldn't say you thinking, because obviously you're saying how you developed this even if you're not fully an extrovert, but being that mm-hmm. introvert and not not wanting to have those conversations and maybe struggling in that department, you hold your own. And you do a very, very good job at it. So props sure. to you. Thank and you. it's awesome. It is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, we we wanted to ask you a couple questions, if that's okay, before we... Absolutely. So, so let's, everyone, just so you guys know, <laughs> Kevin's here. He's going to be telling us his story today. And so Heather and I get to sit back and listen to a story that is is very meaningful that he approached us and, you know, wanted to tell us about. But before that... We got a couple questions just because I, I need to. You know, you're here. People should know more about you and all of those things. So I'm just going to start with tell me about your hot sauce. Do it. Well, what do you want to know about it? <laughs> do it. Just just tell us, like, how you got into that, you guys. So he has his own hot sauce he's selling. Are you selling or going to be selling? I'm going to be selling. You are currently. Yeah, I'm s- going to be selling them. Um, okay. Th- right now I'm doing – um you know, convention circuit. So I want to see how they, they do. And then I need to mm-hmm. really figure out logistics on, cause I'm going to put them on, on my website. And then yeah. I, I, you know, like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to break the bank or do something that I can't handle. You know what I mean? Right. Before, mm-hmm. you know, so I want to make sure that everything's going to work, um, appropriately and to my benefit really. So, and mm-hmm. I've always loved hot sauce and, uh, I've that's made what I was hot- gonna say. Like, how did you get into that? Because <laughs> I, that's just not what you hear every single day. And I was like, okay, I'm buying it because I'm a hot sauce girly, and uh, bring it. <laughs> nice. uh, so I make my own hot sauce for myself for my own consumption. Okay. And, yeah. And that's and then I don't know what the I don't even really know how to describe it. Really, I was just like I was sitting there making it, and then I was just like it was just like bing. Let's fucking sell other this people shit. need this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Other people need to try this shit. <laughs> yeah. So, so I talked to my friend Emily, who does all of my um, designs for my merch and stuff like that. She's she's basically. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't really have a brand right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> and mm-hmm. I, um, she really helped me uh, develop. You know, and like develop everything. Um, yeah. Shout out yeah. Emily. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. For, that's for, a good person to have in your corner. Absolutely. She's um she's a working medium. She um she, she does re- readings and stuff like that. She has a website, the fine art medium, uh, dot com if anybody's interested in a reading. Um 
and you can see her like reviews and stuff on her readings on her website and everything mm-hmm. so you know like what she's done for other people yeah and she has her art gallery so you can see all of her art and if you're interested oh, cool. you can just go to my website where the weird ones are podcast.com go to the shop yep. and you can see all the like the merch that she's on so i've done i did my logo myself but everything else is from her and cool. I can't nice. thank her enough. And we we're we're stu- we were working on a comic book, but she's had been having some health issues and doing mm-hmm. um sitting for that long of a period to do uh pages right. isn't really beneficial. So it's kinda I'm either gotta find a new artist for the comic or um No, she's gonna get better. She's yeah, gonna get just, better and she's gonna be manifest, right there to do it. Yeah, manifest we're manifesting it. it. Yeah. yeah. So, and she made, right. so she made my labels too. She made my la- labels for my hot sauce. So That's she awesome. put it, made Super it. Super cool. Yeah. She made it to uh, match the brand of the podcast and everything. So the podcast logo is on it. Uh, the ingredients is on it. I didn't do a uh, nutritional value because hot sauce doesn't have technically a yeah. nutritional value. So <laughs> there's need, no calories. Yeah. Either you want it or you don't. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so right now I have two flavors um, it, at the conventions, I'm only, well. The first this first convention coming up in April, I'm only gonna have the the hot sauce that I've been making for myself this entire time, and I've okay. decided to name it Hot Lemon Squeeze. So it's hot. It's pretty hot, <laughs> and it yeah. tastes like lemons. That's right. super cool. I'm excited. Well, you gotta buy it here that. as soon as it's available. Absolutely. I'm <laughs> it is going to be ordered. Yes, it is. Oh, wait. I'm not allowed to sing today. All right. It's fine. <laughs> Just kidding. You're taking it Always too seriously. Always singing. <laughs> I, I, I actually never take really anything serious ever. Um, but yeah, that's exciting. So cool. Such like just one of those things that's like, obviously it spoke to you. You're like, this is bomb. And everyone else needs to enjoy this as well. I love stuff like that where it just yeah. kind of like. It tells you what to do. You know right. what I mean? It's like, <laughs> Pretty much. you're going like to sell me and you're going to sell me. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like Target weirdo. <laughs> oh, man. All right. you, you, you let Target tell you what, what, what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Heather, you got a question? <laughs> I am interested just because... So we actually... Especially a lot of our earlier episodes when we were still wine time. I mean, we still talk about it now. It's It's practically a running theme through all of our episodes but um we talk about mental health um especially mental health of mothers a lot we've both talked about our postpartum journeys um throughout motherhood and just you know a lot of of the the struggles that um everybody but especially moms too when they're especially when they're going through postpartum go through so what is one thing that you like to tell yourself or something that you like to do when you need a pick me up, when you're in a funk, when you're in a, in a headspace that's just not, you know, doing it for you? What's something that um, you could share with our listeners that you're like, you know what, I need to get out of this funk? What well, do you do other I- than eat some awesome hot sauce? <laughs> <laughs> I go for a hike. Um, I usually nice. take my shoes and my socks off and connect with the earth, um, sit in silence. It's usually with my dog. Um, so, uh, my dog actually helps a lot too. So if I'm not able to go hiking or anything, just sitting with my dog and just, you know, cuddling with her or whatever. For um, sure. Helps out a lot. I love but, that. That's your shepherd. What do what? It's your German shepherd. Is that the... I don't have the a German dog? Shepherd. No, she's a. Wait, which dog did you send me the picture of? Did I send you a picture of a dog? Yeah, <laughs> we were sending pictures. Oh, yeah. Well, no. Oh, I yeah. Like okay. At some no. Point. It was not a German Shepherd. What in the world? What'd you send me? <laughs> I know. Maybe I'm tripping. Look, everyone's sharing dog pictures all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Okay. Oh, way off. okay. My bad. Pit bull, if you're fancy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fine yeah i was way off but I, it's that is such like so the hiking that has been personally like one of my biggest therapies in life for mm. anything mm-hmm. right there and dog included i mean mm-hmm. anytime i mean the dog that i have right now look she don't want to go she don't want to go <laughs> i'm like please come with me 
(laughs) She's like, no. (laughs) I don't take her on big hikes. It's like, because there's some trails around here that are just like a couple minutes and they're not like up a mountain or anything. But I did take her up Mount Washington one time and she fucking hated it. (laughs) And then she slept for two days straight. <laughs> oh She's like, gosh. never again. <laughs> yeah. She's Why'd like, you do I'm this? too fancy for this shit. I broke an ankle. <laughs> oh. She's like, you're trying to help yourself, but you're ruining me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is so funny. I actually right. ended up, because I put her in a harness, and it, the, the mm-hmm. harness has a handle on the top of it. So the whole last mile is nothing but like... Oh, bunch of boulders so you're going over boulders and boulders oh, i had to carry her the rest of yeah. the way up. so I, and my son was with me and my son's like are you gonna seriously carry her the whole way and i'm like yes and he's like why don't we just go back down i was like we're a mile away from the top when we get to the yeah, top no. we're taking a freaking shuttle down i'm not walking back down this ditch. <laughs> And then I freaking and, and you know I you know I'm switching arms because she's freaking forty five pounds. And yeah. I just ended up I ended up just walking with her on my shoulders. I put both legs on each side. She looked like she was freaking yeah. gonna just pass out right then and there. And oh. I was like, oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> she was ready. What's her name? Uh, her name's Rizzo. 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 Yeah, Rizzo. Love my it. Nizzo. Like from Greece. Yes. Yeah, love yes. it. Nice. Rizzo the pink lady. So my Nizzo. Love it. All right. One more, and then we can uh, get into what we're doing. Uh, I just want to hear one thing that you're excited for, something coming up or just anything that just you're excited that it's about to happen. Well, I'm excited and f- nervous as all hell. Um, in September, I am doing my first speaking event. If you like paranormal, true crime, and some cryptids, or just anything weird, check out Ouch! Was That a Ghost? Brought to you by your host, Liz. You can find Ouch! Was That a Ghost on Spotify, Apple, or any audio platform. New episodes drop every Thursday. Oh, I did hear about that, I, that on your podcast. Uh, yeah. Which one was that? Because I know you have a few coming up. Which one was that one? So this one is, it's called Cryptid Fest. It's in, Okay. I have a really hard time with pronouncing Massachusetts town names, um, but it's. <laughs> As do us all. <laughs> yeah. Ran- Ranaheim, Massachusetts, I believe. It's next to Marlboro or Middleboro, uh, Mass. It's okay. near, it's like it's right in the area of the Bridgewater Triangle. Um, gotcha. And it's being organized by uh, her name's Je- Jess Carl Carlozzi. Um, she's has a YouTube channel called. Uh, to her logo is right here on my freaking fridge. This big one in the uh-huh. uh huh. It's called oh, cool. Cryptid Bits with General Tidbits, and it's oh, nice. so she's on <laughs> That's YouTube a good name. where she yeah she talks about <laughs> yeah. uh, cryptids. With uh, with guests, and I, she does some episodes by herself. So very cool, uh, very cool. Nice. So yeah. first speaking event, that's a that's a big deal. Yeah, um, I know. I knew. I I recently knew that I wanted to do that, um, mainly because like I want definitely want to uh, talk to people about you know, the mental health aspect of, you know, encountering said things like the therapy and, and stuff like that is they tend to look at you like you're crazy. So you don't want to say anything to your therapist. Cause then they'll try and like shoot it down. Like they don't like actually treat mm-hmm. you like it, it actually happened. Cause in your mind it actually happened, whether you, it did or not, you know what I mm-hmm. mean? So perception, right? Perception. Yeah. yeah. That makes me think, cause I just listened um, to the episode you did with, Scott and Ryan and I think it was Scott who told the the about the Wendigos right and then the whole um 
the the whole it was basically like a diagnosis that people would get in that area and you know how that really messes with your mind um and you can totally see it you know cold winter isolation turning yeah. into something that you you yeah for sure no i totally was like yeah i see it i see it 100 <laughs> percent. so yeah it's crazy well good luck uh with that that's i can't wait to hear about it i you know you're gonna do amazing and i feel like that's it's just gonna be the beginning so that's super i'm excited for you that's freaking <laughs> awesome you. that Hell is yeah. super cool <laughs> yeah I feel, september I it'd september. be like something good for that's the awesome. uh for the podcast get more like a, a bigger for sure. networking and then you know if i do a good job maybe other people want me to speak at their events or something right you know? yeah you know, for knows? sure i've actually become that's pretty awesome. close with uh jess mora who is uh, the organizer for Encounter Quest, which is in North Carolina, where I'm going in, uh, in just like three weeks, April. I was gonna say that 13th. one's soon. That yeah. one's cool. So we'll see. Very awesome. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Well, I mean, you're just opening a bunch of doors, which is exciting. For sure. So can't wait to see what comes from all of it. Me too. Um, I'm excited. You too. Yeah. <laughs> it was the little like little move you just did that made that sentence so much better. <laughs> um, now, you know, we mentioned it a little bit earlier that you have a story for us. You you came to us and that was, I mean, you said how that's not something you would typically do in the past, but that was such a big deal to me is that this is obviously something that is very real, very like in your head, in your heart, very heavy that you want to talk about. And Mm -hmm. that's exactly what we try to do. And we try to approach cases and stories with as much respect and much like awareness and advocacy for these families and for these Mm -hmm. victims. And um, I just, any way that we can help to spread these stories and say names is such like a big thing to me. So thank you for, for approaching us and coming to us and trusting us with the story that you're about to tell us. And we are eager to hear it. Yeah. All right. The floor is yours. The mic has been passed. (laughs) The floor. (laughs) The podcasting chair is yours. All right. Don't yell at me for looking at my notes. No, you're good. (laughs) Never. (laughs) I know. I'm just kidding. Um, We can't even see you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so in um, early 2009, um, do you guys remember, you know, early, like er- your early 20s where you, you were out clubbing all the time or something like anything like that, like just meeting yeah. people all the time? Or maybe yeah, you didn't. For I, sure. I, I, didn't, I didn't really do much of that, but um, a lot of people <laughs> did. And th- so there's this really popular place up here in Maine in Portland called the old port. And, you know, young people are there for jumping from club to club. And it's just like this whole block of just bars and there mm. there's bars out on the pier and stuff. Well, so Trista Reynolds, she was 23 and she comes across this guy, Justin DePietro. And so this is like spring of 2009. So they're out, they actually, you know, get really close um, in this short amount of time and they end up spending some time together and Trista ends up pregnant, but they weren't together. They were, it was more like a, mm-hmm. just like a fling Casual. thing. They, yeah. 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 And so she ends up calling, letting Justin know uh, about it. And then she brings into the world a beautiful blonde, blue eyed little girl that she mm-hmm. named Ayla Reynolds um, she was born April 4th, 2010. Um, and yeah, she's just, she's, um, hold on. If, if I could show you guys a picture, if you haven't seen it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I mean, pictures break my heart, especially in situations like this, but it also is. It's good to it, put a face to the name, yeah. like 100%. And I'm already, my heart is like. I mean, Heather, you yeah. and I, and, and you know, Kevin, you too. We've been parents of little, right. little kids before, and it's like, 
the biggest blessing right then and there. Mm-hmm. And then we know why we're sitting here. So, right. Part. I don't know if you guys can oh, hold on. Let me turn down. Uh-huh. The, let me turn down. I was going to say, the... we could, we could look it up too. If it would help oh. any, you could try. Well, let's see if let's that see. works. Go oh, to what a cutie. A I can't see. Go to the side a little. Other side. Yeah. Oh, look at her. Look yeah. at that face. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gosh. My heart. That is so, you know, one of my babies. Whether right. I, I had no idea she would ever turn out blonde, blue eyed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense when you look at me or my husband, but. <laughs> My sis, my sister came out blonde. Uh, she didn't have blue eyes, but she came out blonde. And my dad is is native, with black hair and uh-huh. olive skin. And then my mom also was dark brunette, and because my yeah. mom's French. And then friggin' yeah. had me with black jet black hair. And then my my daughter, uh, my daughter, my sister comes out with freaking <laughs> blonde hair. And we're all like, what the? It's well, the weirdest what thing. The hell is happening? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, well, I mean, my mom is Filipino and those, those genes are really strong, but my dad is very, very white with, uh, blue <laughs> eyes. And then so is my husband's mom. Very, very uh, fair yeah. skin, blue eyes. So it, you know, it skipped that generation and it all went it straight to her. Down the lines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. Um, that that picture is adorable, though. It is adorable. Such a oh, yeah, you can tell she has the personality. Yes. Oh, for sure. Yes. For sure. Um. So, uh, they they ended up having like a little custody like battle kind of sort of thing. Um. They weren't like harsh towards each other or anything like that. But you know, um, Krista had you know f- technically full custody, and Justin was just. T- took her whenever he wanted wanted her which was mm-hmm. very seldom um gotcha which i honestly um i don't know um like who your fan base is or and i feel like it's mostly women but like if there's any guys mm-hmm. out there like how the fuck can you like have a child and not participate i couldn't right myself yeah, like it. even when yeah. my, my ex-wife and i split up like i was just like i want them every, every weekend and that's what I yeah. did. I picked them up Friday afternoon and I brought them to school Monday mornings. So, yeah. I mean, Every week. feel free to say anything that you want to say right now. Oh, yeah. The floor is yours. And it's really, it really is, you know, these conversations need to be had. And, and sure. it's very unfortunate that there are so many people that, and, and it's not all dads, moms too, in certain situations yeah, that are not there when they need to be there. All right. And it's sad. And then it comes down to sometimes thinking, well, you weren't there, so you're not going to be here anymore type thing. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, I do get like, I don't want to get into this debate, but like the um, like men technically don't have um, what what's the word that I'm trying to. As Trent. many rights as women do when it comes to parenting and being with their children. <laughs> the, that and we we don't have re, we don't have reproductive rights. Mm. Like we can't choose whether to have a child or not. Um, mm-hmm. That's seldom. That's solely with the mother. So, um, like, yeah. ju- I get uh, Justin probably didn't want her, um, which kind of sucks. Um, and that's a shitty yep. feeling for a child to to be honest with you. For sure, once right. it's for brought sure. into the world. Um, but he did try, try, he didn't try very hard, but he did try. Um, when she was first born, he denied that it was even, that she was even his. And then a paternity gotcha. test would pr- prove that it, that she is his. So, yeah. and then. Wow. So it's clear right from the kind of the get go that yeah. he didn't want to be involved. Didn't. Yeah. Whether yeah. He I think truly that shows what he was a little bit of the character of him. When he's like, it's not even mine, and then you know, not really fighting super hard for, you know, the the custody for sure. Absolutely. Um, so just a a l- almost two years. Um, so it was December seventeenth, twenty eleven. 
uh, Justin DiPietro calls 911 um, saying that he last saw his daughter at 8 p.m. And he uh, when he put her to bed and his sister Alicia uh, checked on her at 10. And then the morning that morning she was gone, um, not mm. knowing what happened to her, where she went or anything like that. He didn't have anything to give the police or anything. So the biggest man, uh, biggest search for a missing person in Maine's history happened in this time frame. Um, oh my gosh. the, the Maine state police were, you know, they were in the rivers, they were diving, they were, um, looking in wells, they were going everywhere and trying to leave nothing unturned. Um, yeah. and it, it was seen like we, you could see it and they, they weren't, they wasn't just specific to water, Waterville. So this happened in Waterville, Maine. Um, he, that's where, uh, Justin was living and Trista had just, uh, filed for primary care to, so like that, oh, like 100%, yeah. like right before this happened. Um, and she was with her boyfriend, uh, go, oh, so. Sorry, let me back up a little bit. So Trista did struggle was a struggling um addict um at the time mm-hmm. too and she had checked herself into rehab. So she was trying to clean herself up for her daughter. And mm-hmm. her boyfriend at the time was bringing her to rehab uh like 2 hours away. And gotcha. so she got the phone call that her daughter's missing, so she turned around oh, so she didn't even go yeah, to rehab. Absolutely. Right. Um and basically like got clean cold turkey at through this whole ordeal because like Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i I don't want to be doing that shit i I need to find my daughter yeah Um, Mm -hmm. Mm, i got goosebumps oh so i mean there's it it's hard right so absolutely not not that i can speak in any capacity you know or experience personally a lot of family a lot of people I know have struggled mm-hmm. and it's hard. It is so mm-hmm. hard. And mm-hmm. to know what a child's love and what your love for a child can do to you in that moment to help you just, and especially in a moment where you probably immediately want to turn to something that you rely on so much or oh, need for so sure. much. Since yeah. You said addict, you know, it's like, but to not do that, to choose your baby and to choose to fight and try to, you know, find her. Sorry, I'm off my soapbox. I'm back. Yeah. I think it really also is just like a my testament to like the the strength of th- a mother's love and like what a person is willing to do and sacrifice and do for themselves so that they can provide for their child. And it's crazy to see everything that, you know, she was trying to do to make sure she was what she needed to be for her kid. And then, you know, there's the dad. So. Yeah. 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 Who uh, didn't seem to even like care. Like. Mm, Right. uh, From stories, it just seemed like he just wasn't, did anything with, with Ayla or anything like that. It was just like, um, I don't know. Like, so. When she was gone, she was left in the care of Trista's sister, right? And this happened to be one of those times that Justin was like, huh, I want to see my daughter. Um, yeah. So he, All of a sudden after she's trying to get full custody, you want to see your daughter? Yeah. Okay. So they, um, so this woman, Karen Small, she works for the DHS, um, and she... Uh, goes to uh, Trista's sister's house with cops uh, to remove Ayla from her care to give her to Justin. Um, and so when they did that. She did no background checks. She did no interviews um, and no house checks after like she went with Justin while Trista was gone. Cause she was, she was going to, she went to different. Re- so she was at a, a rehab or like a day 
I don't know what it's what you call it, like a group home or something like that. And then mm-hmm. the day that Ayla went missing was when she was actually going to the real rehab. But so she was out of mm-hmm. the picture for like a week or two, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, gotcha. But she was with her sister. Um, And so they went and the cop even like they did it when she went missing. He did an interview. He's like, you know, I, you know, picked her up to take her to, to Justin and she didn't want him. She right. wanted the sister. Um, so there is um, signs of abuse. Trista often got her got her back from Justin with bruises. Um, she actually, uh, let me see, so I don't get this incorrect. I know what's in here. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese. She broke her arm or leg or something like that, and she he blamed it on a kid in the ball pit said that a kid jumped on her in the ball pit or whatever. And hmm. she's like, why is uh, a less than two year old in the ball pit without you? present?" Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I literally just went to a birthday. My, my child is two and yeah. I went to a birthday party. It was a huge ball pit. It wasn't even that deep. She could walk in it, but I was still right behind her, like yeah. right behind her. Cause I'm like, Ugh. and that's Look. my second child. And I'm still being like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Normally you give a little grace on that second child because you're no. like, no, nah, they survive. <laughs> you're fine. Um, yeah. No, well, but ch- those ball pits, depending too, like you you could sink in there and oh, all of sure. a sudden you don't see their head anymore and you are diving in like, okay, give me your arm. Yeah. 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 So you need to be right there. For yeah. sure. Absolutely. Ugh. Absolutely. I agree. Um, and like Chuck E. Cheese, it was like encased. You know what I mean? Right. Like it was a ca- encased in um, like nets, and it was basically a cage. Um, but yeah, so they took they Man. took Ayla from her sister. Um, her sister called her, and then like she wanted to come back, but she's like, you know, let me just do this rehab, and I'll be back. I'll get get her. She filed for the custody, for full custody. Um, like the the day before she went missing, went missing. The day before she also went to. To rehab. Um, so, all right, where was I? Sorry, guys. You're good. We do all that right. about five times an episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when the cops are called, the cops are looking around. There's no signs of forced entry of any kind. Justin swearing that somebody had to have taken his daughter. Um the cops actually went to Ron Reynolds house in Portland to break the news to, to him. Um, look, well, they were looking for Trista and then he had to call Trista to tell her Ugh. what's going on. And that's when she was just like, you turn, let's go back. Um, December 19th, they seized Justin and Courtney's car. Courtney it, at this time is Justin's girlfriend who also had a young child with them. Um, for mm. some reason, Courtney's child was allowed to sleep in the bed with them, but Ayla was in a, a room by herself with, oh no, she was in a room with... Was she similar age, the the other one? I think so, yeah. I believe like so. If not, awkward. maybe a tiny bit older. Mm-hmm. That's um, a little backwards, but yeah, also... a little bit. Um, not okay. Uh, right, right. Um, so they searched the car... Um, a week later, the house is surrounded in crime tape and, uh, you know, it's being searched as a crime scene. Um, Mm -hmm. December 29th, Trista calls out Justin for like, so when it first happened, the first like week, they're, they're seen together in the media, holding hands, pleading with the camera, uh, to, for people to uh, whoever has Ayla to just give her back. Um, right. And she starts accusing, like a week later, on December 29th, she starts accusing him, where the fuck is my yeah. daughter? Uh, yeah. In yeah. the media. And he goes on like yeah. Good Morning or whatever with freaking Matt Lowry, the guy that got fired for, you know, who he yeah. is. Anyways, yeah. um, so he's like, you think you know uh, what is best for Ayla, but you don't. So I need you to bring her back and stuff like that. Like, like somebody like took her 
and they think that they're doing better for her than he would have, I guess, mm. is what basically he's saying. Um, which is the rubs me the wrong way. His, his mother is a fucking piece of work too. She's freaking oh, psychotic. Gosh. Um, so this was her house. Um, and there there was talks there was talk around the town that there was a party, that they were having a party, and that's why uh they shunned um Ayla away into the bedroom. You know what I mean? So like everybody was up having a good time and the mother's like, there was no party. I was there and blah, 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 blah. And then the cop's like, well, when we first interviewed everybody, you said you were away. And she's like, that's what mm. I meant. I was, I wasn't oh, here. Switching oh, of stories. Wow. That's okay. She's like, I got confused. And I'm like, how do you get confused where you were? You don't get confused that your on that date. Missing? No. Yeah, yeah exactly. <clears throat> so, um, <sighs> Not too long after that, um, the cops meet with, uh, detectives meet with Trista. And the cops, the detectives never released this information. Trista did. Um, She said that on the 30th, December 30th, it was, she was told, she was sat down and she was told that they are expecting foul play. Um. The detectives told her that. Yes, and they were show- okay. they were showing her evidence, her and her family, some some evidence clips and stuff like pictures and and stuff like that. Um, Justin wasn't helping with the searches. Trista and her family were out in like walking the towns, walking the woods and stuff like that. Justin was nowhere to be seen. Um, so he starts combating uh, disinformation. Phoebe is his mother. Uh, she lied about you know, being there or whatever. And, you know, the, the house party thing. Then he starts being non-cooperative. He stops talking to the cops altogether. Um, and that's so shady. That's yeah. so shady. Super. That's like the best way to give yourself away. Um, right there. So, um, a month later, there was a vigil held justin and trista were seen speaking for the first time um then uh trista was presented with a grief counselor uh be be, so that all right so this is the evidence that the cops gave her um there was blood evidence um in justin's bedroom which was in the basement um it and some kind of projectile so like vomit mixed with blood um so in on the basement floor there was blood on his sneakers um blood in his car on her car seat um and that's uh, more than enough evidence right there like oh my god yeah um and on on the couch and her baby doll um no so she was hugging yeah. her. They, they basically they were saying that she was hugging her baby, um, because hugging her baby doll when this was supposedly whatever was happening. Place. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, um. So the uh, there was splatters on the wall in his in his bedroom, um, that are at the height of what Ayla was Ayla, Ayla's height. Um, how tall she was. So like if she was like projectile vomiting or whatever, like there was splatter right. or whatever. Uh, so um and they And they found this, I'm sorry. They found they it with found luminol. This, but they and found it in the first you said that they they went in and checked it the first like seven days, right? Like the yeah. first week. Yeah. And this is thirty days later. So they found that and they yeah. didn't tell the mom. Not well, right and away. he's not arrested. Yeah, I mean he, that's more than enough, like probable cause for an arrest. I mean, come on. Yeah. Um. Okay. So they suspect they suspect um uh, um uh, either sh- some kind of poisoning or blunt force trauma. Um. There was oh, um God. at least a cup of blood in in the basement. That's how oh much God. that they they were saying. Um, so they continued to search. 
for the body. Uh, February 3rd, uh, DiPietro's house is actually vandalized uh, because people in the in the town were like, fuck this guy. Were you there? Huh? Um, no. <laughs> I should have. Okay. I was actually... <laughs> yeah. I was actually... I think, I think I was living in Massachusetts at the time <laughs> when this happened. Um, uh, Justin... Linnell, where why is why do I have this guy's name written? I'm sorry, my fucking notes are all over the fucking place. No, it's okay. I'm still sitting here. Like, how have you not told me he's arrested? Yeah. yeah so, like, that's my heart crazy. is aching, uh, and I am just my jaw is dropped because you haven't read that sentence that I'm waiting for. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. This is Liam Collins, the host of the podcast Crime Over Wine, and I'm about to make your Wine Wednesdays so much better. We know that there is nothing better than hanging out and listening to your favorite true crime podcast over your favorite bottle of wine, and that's where we come in. Every week, we share a new head-scratching true crime story while reviewing your new favorite bottle of wine. So your new true crime adventure is waiting for you. Crime Over Wine drops new episodes every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah. Oh my god. Or whoever I wish, else was I wish there. I had His that girlfriend, sentence the sister, who whoever else was there. Like yeah. our people were there. Yeah, there so technically there's three people in all, including two other children. Because Alicia oh had, had a child. So this Justin Linnell guy that I just mentioned is actually his Justin's sister's baby daddy, if you're freaking okay. a child still and you call people <laughs> baby daddy and baby mama, but Jeez. That's a side point. Um, he uh, actually posted on Facebook that he thinks that they did something to Ayla because of the custody battle. Uh, while he was, no, he was in the middle of a custody ba- battle with Alicia for his kid. So he, this guy was actually so fighting they for weren't, his kid. <laughs> they weren't together. What? He's now saying that he thinks that the three of them, so Justin... The sister, which is his God, it's a web. Yeah. So Justin, Alicia, (laughs) and Courtney. Justin, Alicia, and Courtney are there. And then the baby daddy of Alicia is the one that's saying they had something to do with it. Yeah. First (gasps) of all, Facebook posts, probably not the best place to just (laughs) go air that, but also take it to the authorities immediately. Yeah. Yeah. (sighs) Um, And he was saying this during the disappearance, like right, like as it was like happening. Um, Lance DiPietro, um, actually ends up jumping this guy with like a couple of his buddies and then gets arrested Who's for Lance? it. Who's so, Lance? I mean, I know the last name, but. So, so Lance is Justin's brother. Oh my God. So oh he. Oh my God. Yeah. He, he j- jumps this guy. Um, and Justin continues to stick to an abduction story. Although the police are like, there's no evidence of an abduction. There's no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he then he tried to say that Trista came in the middle of the night and took her. Um, I mean, come on, there had to have been at (laughs) least one, if not several witnesses that place her. Like, come on, man, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. (sighs) And uh, the cop, there's no the cops are like, there's no way to even open the windows from outside, like, especially (laughs) Ayla's window, and um, even with it unlocked, it was like stuck. The cops would the cops there themselves right. couldn't even open it. Right. Um because Justin was like, Oh, the window was unlocked. The cops were like, Yeah, and we can't open it. <laughs> yeah. You're digging yeah. your grave, dude. Like yeah, you seriously. are literally setting yourself up to just give yourself up in this moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um so Basically, they they're like the best at the moment. The best we can do is neglect, because um, they want to have their ducks like in one hundred percent of of a row. Yeah. There's and they they ne- they haven't stopped. There's still updates that come out about this and stuff. Um, but thirteen. So basically, he left Ayla in her room for thirteen hours alone. No, before he went no. and checked on her. Mm-mm. <sighs> Mm-mm. Um, not then, a. Do- was she two at this point? She was two? 
She was, she was a, like almost. just under almost two, right? Like yeah, twenty she was months. Two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you so don't do that. It was December and her birthday. She would have been two in April. She was April. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, you don't you don't do that. No. <laughs> and no kid just stays in their room for that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no way. So that. <laughs> Absolutely. Not without crying or anything. Uh I at least I've never experienced that. <laughs> My kids yeah, still no now. Way. Still now, uh, as teenagers, are like, hey, can you give me something to eat? Uh, fucking make yeah. it yourself, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <What the> yeah. <laughs> and while you're at it, bring me something too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My daughter is actually pretty good at that. She'll, she'll, she sometimes makes herself some waffles randomly because uh, I got her this like little mini like waffle maker for Christmas like three years ago. Um, yeah. And she'd be like, I'm going to make some waffles. I'm like, can I have one? And she's like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, so I think it was like a year. Uh, no, it was a few months after this that that this happened. I think it was like the summer of 2011. Um, no, uh, 2012. I'm sorry. There was a body found on deer <gasps> island in um in massachusetts which is extremely far away from maine from waterville maine specifically and mm-hmm. it was the remains of that um of a small child around the ages from two to three um and so it was speculated for a long time. Like I, I was seeing this on Facebook um, almost every day for like two weeks that, you know, test it, yeah. test it. It's, it's Ayla, it's Ayla, it's Ayla, it's Ayla. Um, they tested it and it came back as another missing little girl that was closer to oh the area. So it wasn't Ayla. Mm. But there was like a brief moment there where everybody's like breaths, they were just like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we found sure. her. Um so when this blood evidence was presented to Justin, he had zero reaction. He didn't even like, wasn't like, Oh my God, no. Like he didn't react at all. Um, and then his lawyer goes, well, it's not necessarily blood. And I'm just like, what? 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 Uh, because there was, because of the, the vomit or whatever, is that what he's referring to? Because yeah. there was something else yeah, in it? Yeah, because yeah, because of the possible vomit just, or whatever. He's Body ridiculous. <laughs> Fire him immediately. And oh then just just backtracking for a moment and, and Justin not having any sort of reaction or whatever. Even yeah. if, even if you thought, and you're sticking to this story and in your heart and in your every single fiber of your being, you thought someone walked through that closed window that doesn't open came in here and took your daughter yeah. out not, of her room right and then you're not you are going to worry about that blood yeah, right. yeah. well yeah. yeah participate in searches but you're you're all of a sudden going to say oh i don't know i don't know why this blood was here that's not you're going to have a feeling about that yeah. even if you've been emotionless and like wondering like Oh, or not wondering, but saying someone else came in here, you're not going to show that you feel sad or bad that in this taking of a child, she bled? She was yeah. hurt? No? No feelings whatsoever there? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Um, but he did He did provide a story for the blood in his basement saying that she it was from vomiting, that she was you know, vomiting, and then they're like, well, "You didn't take her to the to the doctor." And he's like, "Oh, it stopped." So. You vomit. Blood, I'm sorry. If you blo- yeah, deal. if you're vomiting blood, that's immediate doctor. Like, hello, yeah. especially that at that age. Like, seriously. Yeah, uh, for oh real. Oh my gosh. For real. I mean, there's so many things that this kid did that pisses me the fuck off. Um, yeah. So right around then, um, they start. Um, in Oakland and Fairfield, they start looking into the rivers again, and then Justin in two thousand twenty, uh, two thousand thirteen, Justin is charged with domestic abuse on Courtney. Oh <gasps> shit! 
So I mean, not surprised. He seems yeah, definitely very not surprised. Bag ish, yep. it not ish. <sighs> Absolutely. So he scumbag. had to go to court for this. Yeah. Um, guess who shows up at the courthouse with media Trista. in tow? Trista, hundred percent. Yes, Trista and her father show up at at the tr- courthouse, um, chasing Justin, yelling, "Where is Ayla?" Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Call him out. Trista stated that when this was happening, that she thought for sure Courtney was gonna, you know, tell her something. Yeah. Tell the truth. Yeah. And she never like did. look what look. Ugh. It's probably because she had something to do with it as well, and yeah. like she's worried, even if it was you know covering up, allegedly. <laughs> But, like, even if, like, she was somehow involved in covering it up, she's probably would be worried that it would, you know, she would be punished for that, which she should deserve, especially keeping it silent all this long. Oh, yeah. But you would hope that after seeing just, like, what a complete scumbag this guy is firsthand, you would come clean because you're a mother. And that put yourself in Trista's shoes. Like, imagine that happening to your own child. Like, you have to. Exactly. That's what hurts so bad is, like, there's other parents that, I mean, in all likelihood are involved in this. And they're not coming forward. Come on, man. Do the right thing. Absolutely. Um So when they were were chasing him down outside the courthouse, uh, his mother... Um, turns to her, to Trista, and goes, "Why don't you tell us where Ayla is?" And she's like, "I would, ha- I would, if I knew where she was." Seriously, Jeez. we wouldn't even be having this conversation if I knew where she was. Uh, Come yeah. on. Um, <laughs> I was just like, "What the fuck is this lady?" Like, I think this lady, there's something wrong with this lady. But oh, for um, sure, there was rumors that uh, Justin had taken out uh, life insurance on Ayla. Uh, prior to this happening, but he didn't. Okay. But th- it was it was it was circulating for a while. I wouldn't there. have put it past him. No, I wouldn't have. If either. it was true, yeah. Um, God, I freaking wrote my notes in like a fucking circle, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right. So, body still hasn't been found. To this day. Um, to this day? To this day. Oh, my god! No body. Uh, Justin has never that. been arrested, but uh, Trista has, has served him with um, a civil suit for wrongful death. Uh-huh. Um, in 2017, May of 2017, uh, Ayla was uh, pronounced uh, officially deceased. Um, oh, and that was all gosh. over the media up here, too. Yeah. Um so Justin ended up moving to California and he's living off grid. Nobody can find him. Nobody knows where the fuck he is. You sure about that? I'll put Sorry. me on it. Sorry, I don't know why that came out of my mouth. <laughs> like I'm gonna go <laughs> find his ass right now. I'm like, yeah. you sure about that? I'm sure I'm sure he can be found. They they said that I can't remember the name of the town. I didn't write it down. Um, but they said that he's in this area of this town, but they don't know like his exact address or anything like that. So she's trying to um, serve him with these papers for the wrongful death and shit. And the lawyer's like, let's put it in the paper, uh, the newspaper out there. In yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Flash his face everywhere. Yes. So they did. They put it in the um, the newspaper. And after 41 days, he oh didn't respond. God. They proceeded with um with the with the civil suit, right. um, and you know Justin Justin's lawyer just shows up with no Justin and stuff like that, and they're asking him these questions and he doesn't answer them. And I'm like, what is the point of your you being here if you're not answering right. any of these questions? Um, so. Yeah, so that's where they're at right now. And she added Alicia and Phoebe to the civil suit, which is Phoebe is Justin's mom. Yeah. And right. Alicia is Justin's sister. It's a sister, yeah. So um, Trista's 
has had two sons since this. Um, they'll be tw- they'll be twelve and ten this year. Um, but back in, I think it was twenty twenty one. Um, she was interviewed, and she was talking about um. She was talking about how her first son was playing on the playground. And then described seeing a little girl with uh, with blonde and blue eyes with wings, and he couldn't, he didn't understand what he was talking about. He just told the story to her, um, and he's she says where, and he's like right over there, and there's nobody over there. Uh, so obviously oh the connection God. between, uh, um, yeah, yeah, that's very obvious. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is. So. Who. Um, so, yeah, that's that's that story. And I've been waiting. Uh, 12 years for this guy to be arrested. Yeah. I am so surprised that I mean, I'm glad that because you need to do something if. The criminal courts are not, you know, doing, if they're not moving fast, I mean, you got to do something. So taking him to civil court, I mean, at least getting that on the record somewhere. But it's so crazy that if they find blood, there's no evidence of forced entry. I mean, people have been charged on way fucking less less than that. Yeah. Way less than that. How in the world is this guy still walking around? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's um, insane. I know they've never dropped the case. It's never gone to cold. Um, it's yeah. been open this entire time. They still investigate and stuff like that. They, they've they re-interviewed a hundred times um, and stuff like that. And they continuously put um, her name out there. Uh, you know, if you have any information, please come forward. Yeah. Um, so, and then uh, recently... Um, I think it was, I think it was January. Uh, Trista was interviewed again about Ayla and she's just like, she's like her anniversaries. Actually, no, it was February. She's like her anniversaries come up and I'm just, I can't even cry anymore. Um, I'm yeah. just, I've become so numb to it. Um, like I can't even, I can't even, um, do the what ifs like what if she was here what it, like who would she be like what she would she be like and stuff like that because she's not here and i can't keep expecting that she's going to be yeah. right oh man and then especially so. i mean with her having you know children she needs to and you you never forget obviously but the fact mm-hmm. that she has to be strong and has to you know be there for them Mm -hmm. and I don't want to say like suffer in silence but like not make it as public and as known for them right have you have you ever talked to her me no yeah no okay I didn't know if like maybe you know if that was something you had I've considered it but I like I don't want to like she's She's the media has reached out to her yeah. like so many times. She's and she's yeah. been gracious enough to like talk to them and stuff like that. And I don't want to be like another yeah. person, yeah. you know, yeah. trying to get in there, sticking a microphone. No, in her and face. I I completely understand that. But as soon as you, I mean, how old was the son who saw? Um, I believe she her. said. I think he was like four or five at the time. Oh my god! That right there is like. It's one of those things in those moments that, hmm, sorry, I feel like as a mother would be not only the hardest, but one of like the most beautiful things that I would be able to hold on to, you know? Yeah. And so as hard as it is to like hear that and to think about that moment for her and like for them. I hope that that's like what she took from that and like how Mm -hmm. she can look at that and how she can hold on to that is like she's here saying hi. She's here meeting him. She's here making her presence known. Yeah. You know, 
And, uh, mm, man. Because um, you know, as a mother, like, probably she thinks every day about how differently, you know, her family would be if Ayla was still there and, you know, like, wanting her sons to grow up with their sister and wanting her right. sons to meet the sister and that, seeing how good Ayla would be as a big sister. And, you know, she thinks about that every day. So to be able to have even, you know, the smallest experience of, uh, you know, her sons being able to have her presence just around, that's amazing. Yeah, right. absolutely. Um, she would be um, going. She'd be turning fourteen. Um, wow, April fourth. This coming April fourth. So she would be wow. uh, going to uh, starting high school this fall. This coming fall. Oh my god! If she was here. Oh my yeah. goodness. Okay, so a couple things. Um, so. You said he's in California, uh-huh. and I will say, because I had to look it up immediately, Heather, he ain't too far from you, my dear. I'll he's in fucking... Winnetka. Yeah, that's what it's called. That's literally he's down the Winnetka. street. Yeah. 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 So, and when you say like a more like outskirts city, I'm trying to like think where that could be where you live off grid. You don't live off grid in Winnetka. Um Oh, okay. I mean, there's plenty of like neighborhoods that are just like yeah, kind of just you know just, like lay low. But yeah. I'm saying when when well, I heard off grid, I definitely had this this other vision in my head. But yeah, um, I mean, it could be like a where his name isn't on any bills and shit like exactly. that. Exactly, you know. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, but keep your eyes peeled. Go look at pictures and keep For your sure. eyes as peeled as possible. Heather, my dear, because he's one of those douchebags uh, with a fucking soul patch. He's he's oh, disgusting gosh. looking. He looks just like I want to punch him in his fucking face. Um, Sounds about right. Wow, so much, so much evidence, so many things, <sighs> mm. and it, and it's it's so hard because we we come across so many times we have conversations like this where. What are you doing? Why have you not arrested them? Yeah. What are you waiting for? And and it's they're waiting for that. So not with the arrest though. See, that's the thing. Arrest is ass. When 100%. it comes to the trial, yeah. I do understand the needing that final thing before you go forward with. You can the trial. arrest him that's on that. That's what I was like. Maybe you like done that any you time. easily could arrest him on that. Now you can also you could have freaking charged him now whether you wanted to like seek prosecution i get like if you're the da and you want you're like we don't have enough yet then i can see that but also once an arrest is made and once you've got some kind of charges like that gets a ball rolling right you can start interviewing people you can start applying more pressure you can you have more resources at your disposal to start applying pressure where it's needed to get the truth. And I have, I mean, we have seen people arrested on fucking less. I don't, I do not understand yeah. why that man is not yeah. and in, in jail. And incarcerated on less. You know 100, I mean? exactly. Like not even just arrested, fully sent to prison. Exactly. You're, yeah. you're dead on. Like, yeah. it's so true. It's, it's, God. It, you know, it it's crazy when you look into a lot of these stories about how you know. Not that I I don't. It's not that I don't have faith in like um our the our police or anything like that because I knew I mean they have good intentions. Obviously, we do have <laughs> we do have some bad, bad eggs seeds out there. Yeah. there. you know, but for sure, um, it with all these stories, you know, there's. Nine times out of ten, it's a story where the police just completely dropped the ball. And I'm not saying oh, that, yeah. that that's what's happening in oh, this yeah. case because they've never yeah. let it go. But like still, like uh, I would have expected. We talked about that so much. Could have been done. 
We yeah. get so livid when we talk about bungled investigations and the yeah. fact that, you know, it just leads to and we've we've covered our fair share of cases where the investigations were done beautifully. Mm-hmm. And the and when it finally gets to trial, the the prosecution plays their cards right and you know, you you do what you need to do. But yeah, we get we get livid when it comes to to bungled investigations. But I I see your point because we did a whole episode on people who have been convicted on on DNA evidence and just yeah. like uh, oh man like some of the wrongful convictions because straight up before there was like DNA it was like blood analysis and stuff and you're just like how in the world were set well to I mean a lot in in the main thing pointing me in the straight in the face is the the wrongful convictions were black guys and this is a white dude who's getting away with it right now like it's i mean i'm sure there's a million other things reasons why but when you look at the stats that has a lot to do with it and it's so frustrating that there have been people who have like you said been arrested charged convicted on less and this man is still out yeah i mean look at the you know the making of the murder murderer there. exactly like the oh time, man the first time he went to jail and like he didn't do shit. <laughs> God. Yeah. See, God. but then at the same time, it's like I understand that we have our system in place, and I understand mm-hmm. that there there's yeah. a there's a way and there's a reason. But and and this is messed up to say, but it maybe I don't feel messed up saying it. I would rather convict someone and then let them back out, you know, and let them let them go when we find out damn well that they didn't do it rather than let this person be living in wet Winnetka, California for however many years. Yeah. A free person. Yeah, he should not be when, out. When there was so many things pointing to him. For sure. Ugh. He should not be out there. Yeah. That was, is. Sorry, I was I'm awful. trying to freaking look up some statistics that I freaking wrote down on missing children but i can't freaking find it god damn it but oh, i'm sure heather can just time. pull up i was gonna say i'm sure heather <laughs> I'm can pull up one of her queen. she's the stat queen right there <laughs> but, oh, man. anyway so but i like, remember well when one thing i did want to say the talking about this investigation and stuff is because um this case right was huge Huge, the biggest investigation, right, in the state. So it's crazy to me that this is the uh, biggest investigation in the state, and we still don't have charges. Like, that's crazy to me. Absolutely. What's going to happen? And and you want to know what? You know, when we, like, to compare with other stories, like making the murderer and whatever, like, there was no, like, interrogation, I don't think, either. I mean, they questioned him. They talked to him and stuff like that. But, like, they I don't think they sat Come him in a on! room and did See? their fucking tactics. You know what I mean? Which is Which... so crazy because, like like you said, making a murderer. I mean, ha- like, if you, you've you seen that, Rachel, right? You watched it? Did you yeah. watch it? Yeah. Like, you can see the, like, <laughs> that they're doing to this yeah. kid. Like, the nonstop, nonstop. Now, is it a good thing, especially to a minor, to use these kind of tactics? Not, I mean, you know, false confessions are real, but yes. like the fact that they didn't like, like, come on, that guy, you can go hard on that guy. Absolutely. What Absolutely. the heck? That's but crazy. I will, I will say, because I think I forgot to mention that, you know, the detectives up here are inexperienced in this field. Right. I mean, we do have murders and stuff like that, but usually a lot of the times it's very self-explanatory where this one isn't. Right. Yeah, um, we we talked about that a couple of times in different cases, like when we ca- like when we covered Jean Benet Ramsey, where it's just like you get, like it's not like L.A. where they're interrogating guys out all the time, right? Yeah. On things like this, it's you know you're you're from a less densely populated area where these kinds of you know cases are not happening all that often so you know that's and that's when we always say like call in the big guns man like if you're if you as a you know precinct are not equipped 
Like, don't let ego get in the way. Call in the big guns and they're more than willing to come in. And I'm pretty sure because I I do know a little bit about this case in that it was one of the biggest. I mean, I don't I didn't know a lot of the details that you that you shared. So thank you for that. But I do remember reading that it was one of like the biggest, Mm. biggest cases in Maine. And I do feel like I remember eventually the FBI got involved. But, you know, because it's a missing child. Yeah. Right. So but I think that's one of the the things when it's like if you and the, I mean, props to the investigators for being like for not letting up and, and trusting their gut and saying like there's something fishy going on here. We can't put our finger on it. And right now, like the evidence, like we're, we're, we're kind of limited to, to what we have. So props to that. But, you know, I hope that they reached out as soon as they could in terms of realizing that, hey, you know, we just don't have the experience to to really run with this and make sure that justice is served yeah yeah there's a there's a theory that you know that she was you know puking up all this blood and stuff like that and that they all panicked and they put her in the car um in the hopes to like take her to the hospital and she expired before then and instead of continuing to the hospital they decided to do whatever they did yeah, I can like I mean that seems like a very plausible uh scenario considering where they found all of the the blood evidence. Yeah, and in the, so. in the different in the different areas, but also mm-hmm. you you said they numerous yeah. times. Oh, this is sure. more than one person 100%. holding on to this yeah. truth. It's mm-hmm. more than one person holding this inside. And and we say it all the time, you see say you see something say something. If you know something if you're a part of this, mm-hmm. what are Come you doing? Clean. What are you doing? And yeah, guess what? You're going to have to pay for the fact that you held this information so for long. For over a decade, yeah. For so long. But clear that conscience. See, see what it's going to do to help this mother, to help this family who has been missing. Yeah. Do the this right thing by girl. Ayla. Like, she deserves... Ugh. So much more. Yeah. And it's insane. Oh, God. I When you were showing the pictures, I Googled it, too, so I could get a better view of the picture. And it just breaks my heart. Her face. Mm -hmm. She deserved so much more. So Mm -hmm. much more. Shoot. Shoot. Um, Damn. It's so crazy that. uh, Thank you, first of all. Thank you. Do you have any other details? Okay. Because I need to say, oh, my gosh, because I have not heard a lot about this case. And it's so crazy. We're coming up on almost 100 episodes here. The fact that we haven't uh, covered this case or that I haven't heard like a lot of details. I'm so glad that you brought it um, to to this platform because this is this deserves all the attention because there needs to be justice served yeah. in some capacity for that baby girl and some sense of i mean i don't think you can ever truly get closure from a situation like that but some sense of justice for trista and and some some semblance of closure because I can't imagine that you can ever truly be, you know, okay with that um, happening to your child. But it's oh my gosh, see, oh my gosh, I, I think about. Sorry, I was waiting, Heather. You were talking. No, I'm love. good. I'm trying. I'm <laughs> not. I'm gonna stop now. So no, I, don't I know. It's start okay. crying. Look, I know when to wait. My turn for you. But <laughs> yeah, you know. We can say thank you for bringing this. It needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I – so when it comes to podcasts, right, and every podcast is very different, I think about – I don't know if you know the name Kristen Smart. Um, My God, yes. She hit – yes, okay. I know know that story inside and out. Okay. So with that and the fact that – your own backyard came out and they talked about it and things started moving. It gives you that sense that years, 
and mm-hmm. years and years mm-hmm. can pass. And, mm-hmm. and that was one of those cases that it was very evident. Okay. Yeah. And it was one of those things where people knew, people yeah. knew, just mm-hmm. like this, people mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Okay. And maybe it just takes that name being said, this conversation being had to scare people. Yeah. To, to get them to start thinking, to start fucking up, to mess up. Yep. To then be held accountable. Yeah. And hopefully with this, you know, just spreading awareness and bringing this conversation out and talking sure. about her and telling a story, sure. that's something that would happen. For uh, sure. Did you guys cover but, have, did you guys cover Kristen <laughs> Smart? We did not release it. No, Heather, we didn't well, we, release it. We did it for yeah. Patreon. We did it for oh. Patreon, but we stopped Patreon very early. We kind of jumped the gun on that when we <laughs> started the podcast and uh started too soon and why did we did never not... release fully Kristen? Because I we wasn't need happy to. with it. I want to redo it. I, I that's what okay. I said. So that's well, one of those. Oh, that's right. That I do remember is, that. It, yeah. It's one of the that that mm, ca- so. that listening to your own backyard and shit like that. Like yeah, made me cry so many times. Like <laughs> mm-hmm. the um her father, you know, going through drainage yes. ditches and going mm-hmm. through like culverts. Mm-hmm. And like yeah, yeah, like he knew that he was looking for a dead body. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that's so that's what it makes me think because I've been listening to the latest season of Up and Vanished and their first season. That's what it makes me think of, too, with Tara Grinstead. It was 10 years later and he goes in to this small town, starts asking questions. Lo and behold, probably a dozen people knew what the fuck happened. It was even on I'm pretty sure that, like, back, you know, when it first happened, a report got made to the authorities that, like, hey, this is a theory. And for whatever reason, lots of reasons, one of them being probably that the main guy had a powerful powerful rich family in the area, you know. But 10 years later, a podcast comes in, starts turning turning things over and then, you know, brings that awareness and that renewed kind of vigor to a case and justice can be served. And so that's why it's important to, to continue to talk about these kinds of things, because even if it is a decade old, it doesn't matter. It's never, it's never too late for justice. I 100% concur with that statement. Yes. Wow. Wow. Dang. Dang. <laughs> Dang. I Dang, did see. Kevin. <laughs> I did want to see, though. So, is there anything that you know of? I mean, you, this is something you have known for, for a long time since it started and, and throughout the years. But, like, can you please share with us so that we can share it to our platform, to our show notes, to our socials, to everything that we have on if you know things, if you have tips, if you right. see him, if you, you know, all of those kind of things. Who do we contact? What can we do to try to help in any way? And if you don't have it now, that's okay. We can add it Yeah, I don't. in I don't yeah. have it right and now, but I do know that uh, Trista has a GoFundMe when she was trying back. Okay. I don't know if it's still up, but. Active. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because I'm like, we can add everything in the show, the show notes, you guys. We yeah. will add you everything know. in the show she, notes. She has yes. it for the fees of the civil suit. Yeah, gotcha. good. Which she needs good. every single help in every single aspect of getting that yeah. taken care of. Because if if I mean part of that, with it. exactly part yeah. of that is continuing to investigate, yeah. and you know, yeah. doing what you can. So absolutely. Oh man! All for right. Sure. Well, thank you again for for coming on here and bringing that and sharing her story. For You're us. dead on. That was For exactly him. what yeah. our podcast you like captured. <laughs> you captured our <laughs> well, our vibes. <laughs> yeah. It was very um um it was for the mother. So Yeah, for sure. For sure. Woo! So I hope Woo. um okay. I, I mean 
I don't know, just when I see her in the in the news and her just her face, it it does something to me. It brings it all back. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. It brings it all back, especially I mean, you knowing this case, but as as you said it, I I think we were off air before you even said this, but you being a a having a daughter mm-hmm. around that age, you know, yeah. a little older and and knowing how precious life is and being a parent is and seeing this happen to someone is so especially knowing that it happened a few hours from you like that's it's it's it hits real hard uh and it gets very it feels very personal so for sure yep it does all right kevin please share Wherever yeah, can one more time. <laughs> all of your details so that everyone can go and check you out and uh, get to know you a little bit more, more than they got to today. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it's where the weird ones are. Uh, you can find the show on YouTube, um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. Um, if you're interested in the Patreon, it's patreon.com slash weirdos only, uh, that you get like, (laughs) so I started, uh, two segments for the Patreon, which is conspiracy Tuesdays, where we talk about conspiracies as like a round table. Um, and story time is where I kind of tell stories kind of like this, like I told you today Okay. where, but I tell it in like a story format kind of, kind of a way. So, um, so far, the, I only did one story time, and that was on a murder case. But I'm also mm-hmm. going to cover like actual, just like folklore stories and stuff like that. Um, gotcha. And then I have a website. It's where the weird ones are podcast dot com. I have a blog on there. I've written two articles, so I haven't been too indulged in it, but I'm going to uh, work on that even more because. For anybody interested in knowing, I am an aspiring writer, and I hope to write a novel soon, um, which right. I do have one. Along with your comic book, right? Yeah. Yes. If I can get the comic <laughs> book going, yes. Um, but my first, so I back. had my, I did have, dude, I when I think about writing stories, I have so many different um, stories, but I think I finally honed in on one, and it's going to be a murder mystery. Good. Ooh. Um, nice. So... Can't wait. Look out for that. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but it's loosely based on a cryptid <laughs> as well. So, um, oh, very cool. Yeah, and then the Tie socials is in. where underscore the weird ones are on Instagram. If anybody's interested in checking that out, uh, where the weird ones are on Facebook, Kevin, this is on TikTok. Um, now, if you go on my TikTok, I don't only post things for my podcast. I do post workout videos because fitness is uh, another passion of mine. So, <laughs> um, nice. so beware. Um, and I also try to be <laughs> funny on there. So, um, but yeah, every once in a while, I do go shirtless on my TikTok. I, I, not that I think that I'm like amazingly looking. <laughs> all right, they're looking. all sold. Everyone's so. running now. <laughs> So I freaking love it. Uh, my daughter, well, actually, my ex wife made me feel really weird about my TikTok because apparently, like, I think it was this around this time last year, she's like, Hey, um, Kendall and her friends watch her TikTok. And I go, Okay, stop. And she goes, Uh, Kendall's really upset about it. I was like, Why? She's like, Because her friends keep watching your shirtless video. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> You're like, damn, I'm getting views. Little did you know it's <laughs> oh my God. It, your daughter's I was friends. just like, I instantly got like squeamish. I was like, oh, hello. <laughs> oh my God, that's yeah, hilarious. No. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, sure. We will also, we'll have all of your stuff. I mean, For sure. we yeah. will be sharing as much as we are capable of. And um, everything, again, will be in the show notes, including where to find Kevin and where the weird ones are. And thank you. Thank you a million times yes, for thank being you so here, much. for joining us, and for being you. Because freaking I enjoyed talking to you and listening to you and having you here. It was it made my little heart happy. 
<laughs> it was Happy great. Little, just like a little thing. Thank you. Uh, well, <laughs> like thanks for having Grinch. me. I, I really appreciate uh, you uh, giving me the space to tell this story because I know your platform is really big and people really care about you guys. Um, just on the Instagram alone, you, you know, that's evident <laughs> of that. Um, and, you know, I, I enjoy talking to you and. I am so happy to be here. I listen and I li- I love listening to you guys too. Um Aww. every once in a while they do put me in a truck with a radio that has Bluetooth. But oh, so nice. it's even better. <laughs> but yeah, um I, I think I, I, I uh I messaged uh Rachel not the like the other day and I was like, God damn, Heather's fucking Valley Girl voice. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm so bad. I honestly too, when I know I've done a really bad job with my um like so's, I do go in and try to edit some of them out. And so what you listened to was probably even edited. So just add like 50 times more likes to that and you'll get what I actually sound. Sometimes have you it was ever funny. heard the, Have you ever heard the clip or seen the video? I don't know. I think there's a video to it. Um, and I think it's like um, Frenemies is the podcast name. It's not a podcast anymore, I guess. But the girl uh-huh. is like talking. It's a guy and a girl. And she's like, um, she's saying something. And at the end, she's like, mm, like that. And then no. he starts making fun of her. And every time you because there's some words where you just kind of like, mm, at the end. <laughs> it makes me think of that fucking podcast. Not so funny. <laughs> I totally see it. I totally see it. It's so funny because how early on Rachel was one of, it must have been within like the first six months of the podcast. We must have been making New Year's resolutions. And I said one of my podcast resolutions was to say like less. It hasn't happened. <laughs> and I think that was last, last New Year's. <laughs> Joel was actually, he was working on a piece of, like, um, art for, we're trying to, like, be, uh, I forget what it's called, sponsored on Apple or whatever it's called. But anyways, so he's, like, working on this little art thing. And he was like, what if I take it out and it just says mother murder, right? And then so now that you're talking about that, I could have pictured it where, like, our name was, like, mother murder. But you got on and you're like, like, mother, like, like mother, murder. Like murder. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not what it is, you guys. <laughs> Just want to put that out there for sure. <laughs> it was not oh that. my gosh, that'd be so funny and so on brand for who who I am. <laughs> it's so funny because before I even lived, Clueless came out before Jesus. I even lived in California. So I was valley girling it before I even lived here. And then... Lancaster is not the valley. No. Go to know. college in Long Beach and then eventually end up in the valley. And how I still, you know, I managed to keep it all this time. It all is uh, full circle. And when I end up living in the valley. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't get it from me. I'm hood. Hey, valley girls are everywhere, though. Like, there's, uh, there's yeah. girls I went yeah. to high school with up here in Maine that do that valley girl stuff, too. <laughs> so there's guys, too, that yeah. are very masculine that still, you know, are very valley. I'm just like, hmm, valley girl it up. Guy. I was going to say, that's Scott from Beyond the Shadows is a valley girl. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Fucking Scott. We got you, Scott. <laughs> Hey, we so we got you... all the way through that podcast, and I was just like, "Hey Ryan, get over there!" And I to take a picture, and they're like, "We totally forgot to take a picture." <laughs> oh my gosh, we need to take one too. We should take well. one right now. Well, let's oh, do take a screen one before we sign sk- off. Screen we grab. We gotta sign off before. Oh, we, we still. Off. Well, since you listen to us and you know how how Valley I truly am, <laughs> you know how we sign off every episode, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so do you want to go first? No. Okay. I'll, I don't want to. Well, first. Rachel right. usually well, Rachel usually yeah, goes first okay. anyway, so it's fine. Okay. I'll just say one last time, thank you so much for being thank here. You. Yes. You guys, this was a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing this story. We will talk to you guys next Tuesday. Until then, have an amazing week. We love you guys. K love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. K love you. Bye. <laughs> Always my favorite. Oh my god, that was so perfect. <laughs> that was more Valley Girl than Heather. Uh, it was so perfect. <laughs>
Coming to you live from Channel 25 Action News, I'm Edwina Kemper, and with me is Lavender Robinshaw, curator of the specialty podcast, Early on Wednesday. Tell me, Lavender, do you keep a fresh supply of cryptids? Early on Wednesday has a list of 22 cryptids, and that list is growing all the time. We also like to dabble in demons, ghosts, and anything else that goes bump in the night, or maybe lurking around your house with a creepy smile. Well, how haunted are your paranormal subjects? Sometimes the creepy noises and odd experiences have a perfectly logical explanation, and we gorgeous ghouls love to dive in the psychology behind everything. But other times, the only possibility left is that your house is haunted, or perhaps a demon is trying to possess you. Do you really have that many serial killer cases? The Early on Wednesday database contains information on 4 1,743 serial killers. And sadly, there are 13,105 victims of serial killers. And this is estimated some of these victims aren't linked to serial killers or have never been found. To fill your murder juice cup, we plan to cover them all. Well, you heard it here first. It's early on Wednesday. Do you know where you're listening?